So here, uh, in this picture, is a uh, redox reaction where they're taking uh, some zinc. All right. And uh, placing it into a solution of copper plus two. So copper sulfate. It turns out that the copper in that solution will spontaneously uh, oxidize that zinc. So copper plus two plus zinc. So this would be aqueous. Plus zinc solid would produce zinc two plus. So zinc would come into solution plus copper solid. So that's spontaneous. What's that mean? No energy. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't require any external energy. So that's going to happen. At room temperature, that's going to happen. So let's figure out what's being oxidized, what's being reduced. All right. So what's the oxidation state on this copper plus two? Uh, zero. Oh, no. Plus two. Yeah, it's plus two. Oxidation state has to equal to charge. What about zinc? Zero. 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 What about zinc plus two? Plus two. And then copper over here? Zero. zero. All right, so copper is going from a plus two to a zero. What's going on with copper? Gaining. It's gaining. And then zinc's going from what to what? It's losing. It's going from zero to plus two, so it's losing. So the two half reactions would be my oxidation is the uh, zinc Solid goes the zinc plus two. How many electrons is zinc losing? Two? two. All right. And then, of course, uh, we copper was gaining electrons, so we call that reduction. What is that one? Zinc plus oh, two electrons. Plus two electrons, yeah. So my reduction is copper two plus aqueous plus two electrons goes to copper solid. If we wanted to balance this chemical equation, this redox reaction, what would we do next? Hmm. Balance the electrons? The balance the electrons are balanced, right? Yep, so they would cancel. All right. Then we got to balance the oxygens. Do we have any oxygen? No. Do we have any hydrogens? Oh, yeah, this is balanced. This is a good one. All right, this is probably where we should have started off. But anyways, uh, so this is a balanced chemical equation because they're both losing and gaining two electrons. No, oxy no oxygen, hydrogen involved. Uh, the real reason why we want to talk about this is that this is a spontaneous uh, redox reaction. And when they're in contact like this, it is a direct electron transfer, where, whereas the copper plus two ions come over and they're going to collide, they're going to bang into those uh, zinc atoms and they're going to oxidize it. They're going to take two of those electrons. So in this cartoon drawing, what's happening is, of course, the electrons, the zinc is giving two electrons right to the copper. So zinc right to the copper plus two. So this is direct electron transfer. which is all fine and dandy. But it would be nice if we could somehow make this indirect transfer because what's going on, if the electrons are going from zinc to copper, they're going from point A to point B, so electrons are going from here to here, 
We could even say that electrons are flowing from zinc to copper plus two. And a lot of times, what we can also call electron flow is current. And what else do we call current? Electricity. We measure it in amps. We measure it in amps. So that's electricity. Electrons are flowing from one place to another. So wouldn't it be nice if we could somehow, some way, separate the two half reactions and enable us to use that flow of electrons, that current, that is going to spontaneously happen because this is a spontaneous redox reaction. And that is one of the things we're going to do. So we are going to use that electrical current. So let's talk about current a little bit. So electrical current is just the flow of electrons. from one point to another. All right, and so current which sometimes, especially in physics, we'll abbreviate as I. We don't do that too much. I'm not going to do that too much in this course, but that's usually its uh, abbreviation is I. Okay. The units are, what are the units again? Amps, amperes, is what I heard, amperes. And that is abbreviated uppercase A. All right, so what is an ampere? An ampere is, okay, measuring this current. And you can think of like flowing, uh, uh, the flow of a river. Okay, we're going to have a couple of uh, measurements in the ampere. Uh, specifically, you know, how many electrons are flowing. And then also, we're going to need some unit of time. Right, because more electrons, the longer you measure, the more electrons will flow. That may or may not be more higher current. And so an ampere is uh, equal to what? Well, you've been using it in the lab. Coulomb. Coulomb per second. And that's a Coulomb. And that's our unit of charge, uppercase C. All right, so that's uh, eventually what we're going to start measuring and we're going to want to use. We're going to use that current from our spontaneous redox reactions.